The Gamma OS Next 1.2 has finally dropped, and this time it's running on Android 14. So, what has changed? And is it any better than stock OS? Let's find out. Let's test a few demanding PlayStation 2 titles on the Nether SX2. StockOS boots into regular Android home screen. From there you can launch your apps manually. Gamma OS, on the other hand, boots straight into Daijisha. From there you can still access all of your apps if you need them. And if you prefer Emulation Station, Gamma OS can boot directly into it. On Stock OS, RetroArch sees the 406V just as a joypad. So when you press the Home button, nothing happens. If you hold it, it quits the game and drops you back to the home screen. Which means you have to set up your own hotkeys. In my case that's L3 plus R3 for quick menu and down plus select to quit. But on Gamma OS it is as an Xbox controller. So a short press of the home button opens the quick menu and long press exits the retro arch back to your front end. On StockOS in RetroArch, the mouse cursor is rotated 90 degrees. That's basically unusable. On Gamma OS, the mouse works perfectly, just like it should. I've always been a big fan of CRT shaders in RetroArch, and Fake Loads Mini is my favorite. It's light and made specifically for small screens. With the latest Gamma OS, we now get the global CRT shader built right into the system. It's made using Android's own shader engine, which means it works across the whole OS, not just inside RetroArch. So you get that retro vibe everywhere, without needing to set it up for each emulator. In the previous version, the RGB lighting was pretty limited. Now with this version, we get more control over the RGB effects. And last but not least, Gamma adds audio enhancements with new sound options. So if you want to try all of this yourself, let me show you, step by step, 
how to install the latest Gamma OS on your device. Well, power off your device first. Download Gamma OS directly from GitHub. Make sure you grab the right version. You'll need some extra tools and drivers to install it. Yeah, those ones. There are two versions, full and light, without any Google Apps. The password for the files is on the Patreon page. Unzip the tools and install the drivers first. Launch Unlock Bootloader It will wait for your connection. Use your original cable. And then hold the Home button first and while holding it, connect the USB to your device. If the tool detects the device, the process begins. And you can release the Home button. When it's done, your Ambenic will restart, then power off by itself. Disconnect the USB and close the bootloader. And now go to the download folder and start up the research download. Should be fine, but if you get that error, you need Microsoft Visual C++ from 2005, 2008, 2010 and the latest. Install both. 86 and 64 versions. Restart your Windows and start up the research download again. Click open and load the pack file.
Once it loads, hit start downloading. Again, hold the home button first and then connect the USB cable. The flashing begins and you can release the home button. This will take up uh, 5 to 10 minutes. When it's done, the device reboots and you can unplug the USB. From here is the standard Android setup. Skip, skip, skip. Most of it skip. And that's it. Thanks so much, guys.